Hey folks, let's talk about boycotting Israel, BDS, and groups such as BDS. This story has in recent months just exploded over Israeli media. Um, you log on to any Israeli news site, you'll probably see a story about it there. And you tune into the radio, chances are they'll be talking about that. Uh, this, for example, is a picture from the weekend that's running an article on it. So, this is perhaps a good chance to uh, open this uh, topic up for debate. And I'd like to do so using BDS, BDS organization, as an example. Now, what BDS do is they present their agenda to the general public as if it was some kind of a non-violent form of activism intended to persuade the Israeli government to change its ways and make peace with its Palestinian neighbors. And indeed, they get a lot of people signing up for that because they think, well, it's non-violent, it'll bring about peace, why not? Well, what these people sign up to BDS don't understand is that this is not their actual goal. BDS is not about, for example, creating a two-state solution where Jews and Arabs live peacefully side by side. No! It is about creating one state that is predominantly Arab, where Jews are a minority and are no longer safe. So, in fact, their goal is the eradication of the whole idea of a Jewish state. How do I know this? Well, because they say so. BDS have three very clearly stated goals which if you go through one by one and understand their implications, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's just do that right now. Okay, so I've just logged on to the official BDS website and I've got those three goals in front of me which we can go through one by one. So goal number one is ending its occupation and colonization of all our Arab lands occupied in June 1967 and dismantling the war. Now let's just take that apart for a second. So the first bit that talks about ending the occupation. I think you'll find that most Israelis support that. And indeed, that has to be negotiated in a peace deal. But the second bit that talks about dismantling the wall. Now, that's a strange one. If indeed the occupation is ended, and Israel chooses to build a wall along that border, why is it their business? Why should they care to mention that as one of their end goals? Hold that thought and you see how that comes into play later. So, goal number two. Recognizing the fundamental rights of the Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. Now, indeed, the Arab population of Israel is a minority. It constitutes 20% of the Israeli population. And just like any other minority anywhere else in the world, it does suffer some form of discrimination at the hands of the majority. But this is a social discrimination. It is not an institutional one. It is not directed by the government. It is not a discrimination under the law. Yet, the fact that they choose to care to mention that as one of their goals in a reality where this is already the case, calls to question their true motive. But again, you'll see how that comes into play once you understand goal number three. So goal number three is this, respecting, protecting and promoting the rights of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes and properties as stipulated in UN Resolution 194. Now what this means is the return of all Palestinian refugees of all generations back into present day Israel. If you add up the numbers of all these refugees, plus the number of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, plus the ones in the West Bank, plus the ones in present-day Israel, this amounts to approximately 11 million Palestinians in a land where there is only 6 million Jews, with no wall of separation, because remember, that's been dismantled in goal number one. Equal voting rights for all, being called for in goal number two, meaning a majority Arab rule, and the imminent slaughter of the Jewish minority at the hands of the Arab majority. This is what you're signing up for when you sign up for BDS. This is not a peaceful solution by any measure and I wish you'd take that on board. 